Hi, I'm Jean Tirol. Lots of people are saying that the fact that we have confronted COVID is going to help us confront climate change. I think it's a lot of wishful thinking. Unless we change our institutions and the way we think, we are going to make the same mistakes over and over again. And today, I'm going to try to explain what should be done. Well, people ask me, what is a common good? Imagine you are not born yet, you don't know who you are going to be in society, and ask yourself, what kind of society would I like to live in? So the problem with defining what's good for society is that we all have some role or some place in society. We may be rich or poor or middle class. The rich will want to avoid taxes, the poor would like to tax the rich. We have to change the way we work. Now, as policymakers, we need to understand misperceptions. Um, and that's what's being done in the Deaton review of the IFS, or what I did with Olivier Blanchard in the report for the French president. Marcel Proust used to say that the facts don't penetrate the world our beliefs live in. It's very hard because the facts don't speak to people. They are extremely important because they, they should be the ones who, which guide, actually, policy. But in practice, they don't. You can give a, a, a statistics to people, they don't react to that. So we need to change our discourse, and as advocates for the common good, we need to fight the bad narratives and have our own narratives. The narratives actually, interestingly, are vastly inferior to facts. Facts is what matters. The facts are crucial to guide policy, but at the same time, they don't help with the dialogue with the population, and the dialogue with the population has to take place in part uh, through, through narratives and, and the like. We have to do both, in a sense. We need to collect the facts, uh, use good theories to interpret those facts, but also reach out to people by using the right narratives and counter the negative narratives that are used by many in order to go against the common good. We need to engage in a dialogue, so we need to talk to people, have a broad audience a gathering, we need to go to school. And by the way, the schools themselves have to do their own work, so we need to instill respect for science in school. It's very easy to do, and we can do it in a fun way. So just explain to kids how a correlation is not a causality. Randomize control experiments uh, and explain what it is. It's not very hard. I mean, Pasteur did that in 1881, for example. We academics have to engage in the dialogue with people and try to explain what we know and what we don't know. At the same time, people also have to have respect for science. You know, it's a virtuous, virtuous circle that will help us actually improve things. It's one thing to say we have to fight climate change, but we have to explain why, what's going to happen. And people have to accept the fact that actually there will be a cost to doing that. That's very important because otherwise nothing will be done. And that's why I think a concept like green growth, for example, is a little bit dangerous because if you can have your cake and eat it too, you don't have to pay to fight climate change. And that's what has been happening for 30 years now. So we need to actually change things and understand more deeply what's going to happen. Politics is kind of short-term, so we don't take good care of long-term issues. Think about climate change, think about pension reform, think about inequalities, think about education, think about R&D. What's common between all those topics? Well, simply, if you don't do anything for two years, it doesn't matter, really doesn't matter. But then, if you add two years plus two years plus two years, that gives you decades of inaction. And the problem becomes huge. And then those are time bombs. And clearly, if we have more understanding of science in general, it will be easier for people to find out that this is not the right path. Here I am, an academic stepping out of its comfort zone. But I think we all have a responsibility, actually, to give such interviews and interact more broadly with the public, because if we don't, the populist will have the upper hand.